All analogies are invalid. All of them. In previous videos on Good and Basic, we've described a little bit about the two branches of logic. Inductive logic, which is always invalid, and deductive logic, which is by definition valid. Valid meaning that the conclusions necessarily follow from the premises. If you buy the premises, you've bought the conclusion. And in a previous video, we've also talked about Gödel's proof, also called the incompleteness theorem, which proved that math doesn't fully describe reality. It isn't a perfect match. Now, one way of interpreting this is to say that math is by its nature an analogy. An analogy is something that says this thing is like this thing. Life is like a box of chocolates. Now, if you examine that thing, you'll find that there are points of similarity where it does match and then other things where it doesn't. For example, you never know what you're going to get in the words of Forrest Gump. Yeah, it's a lot like life. That matches. But life doesn't come in a heart-shaped box. I mean, unless you stretch that one really far. And life doesn't taste like chocolate and life doesn't come in individual serving sizes. Life isn't something that is given only on Valentine's Day. It doesn't quite capture everything. There are certain aspects of life that are uncovered and don't match up with the box of chocolates, and there are certain things about life that don't quite describe what chocolate is like either. And so, although there are some things that match, some things don't. This is a quality of all analogies, always. All analogies will eventually break down if you stretch them far enough. And in a way, that's actually really cool, because it says that the ability that we have to understand analogies and to generate them and to use metaphor is really cool, because it's not, it's not something that you could program a computer to do easily. It's not something that is a deductive function. There's no valid, oh, it's like this, so chunk, 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 chunk. You have to be interpreting actively. You have to be internally saying what matches, what doesn't, what fits, what doesn't. You have to be discerning whenever you are making analogies. You have to be feeling out the truth or falseness of what is being said. Now, with the incompleteness theorems and Gödel's proof, we've proven that math is incomplete, that it doesn't quite capture everything about reality. And one way of understanding this is to say that when we use numbers or math to represent the world, what we've effectively created is an incredibly nuanced analogy. We've said that the world is like numbers, that this number is like something else, that this equation that represents the gravitational pull between two objects is like the actual gravity that's attracting the objects, but it isn't quite the same thing. That's maybe not what the theorem means, but we're really not sure what it means. What that might mean is that experience is in a way indivisible, that it's very raw. I mean, you can never quite capture it. That's really the whole thought. All analogies are invalid. All of them. So take them all with a grain of salt. Extract the good that you can from them, and then leave the rest. If someone makes an analogy and tries to use that to prove a point, you don't have to believe the conclusion. It does not necessarily follow. It's part of this branch of logic that is inductive. It is inherently invalid. While the analogy may support its conclusion, it does not prove its conclusion. That domain is reserved for deductive logic, which has no place for analogies.